Hunter X Hunter episode 104. Something already feels different about this episode. <laughs> World domination can wait. It's time for Gunji. No. No matter how much they doubt, nothing they can do. True. That's what it is, these are human names. Wow, it's embarrassing for... Hage's the, the emo lion dude, right? Funny that as bad as I am with names, I think I just learned his name and it's the one he doesn't want. Why does that make it easy for me to remember? What is wrong with me? But yeah, it's sad, embarrassing, concerning that everyone knows his thing. Not only is he not that powerful, he's not good at scheming. What is he good at? It's like the Dunning-Kruger thing in full effect. Actually speaking exactly what they were just saying. The talented recognize what talent is and understand its depths. The untalented don't and think they're talented. That's Hagia for you. That's our Hagia. Hagia is the comedy side of American Idol. Doubt X and X hesitation. I don't know why I love these puppet things, man. They're so cool. Narc! There he is. There's, there's our Hagia. Portal. Let's get the portal ability. Portal Nen. Uh, that's so cool. Is there anything in the world Hunter x Hunter didn't potentially influence? When did Portal come out? As cool as Hunter x Hunter is, this is one of the first times where, as much as I've always loved media, I rarely think about the sort of historical significance of things. Like, people will tell you that XYZ movie is great because it inspired all these movies that came after it or reshaped a genre or what have you. With Hunter x Hunter though, man, even from where I am in the show now, it just feels like a different beast entirely. Some of that might be misattributed, like I don't know if this is actually Portal, but no, no, nevertheless. No, 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 no. Yeah, that's what he was using to get people to uh, Netro. The space thing also adds an extra element to it that Portal doesn't have. Taking a quick hydration break. Stay hydrated. It's one of those things that it's so simple, but the applications are limitless. Kill this one. Kill this one. Thank you. I don't suppose you can portal the air. Finally, finally. Yes, here we go. Who the hell knows in the Nen world? Anything could be anything. God, the mental resources it must take to live in this world. Ooh. Yeah, I kind of played your hand prematurely, no? Shido should really bring a book. There's no enemy you can't beat. <laughs> I got this turned into a psychological profile. Ah yes, the true, the true Nen ability. Psychology. Chido has mommy issues. It's really interesting, but also a little bit scary. If you can find out what needs people have that are linked to some deeper emotion, typically something like self-worth, and they don't know they have it, you you have them. That sounds really manipulative, and of course that knowledge can be used for evil, but I think what's so cool about it and so interesting is not as a tactic for manipulating others, but as a, a query for oneself. Like, what are the things I'm not aware of that are driving me? Like, what are the, the things I've linked to my own self-worth where I feel deficient? That is a chink in my armor so that people who have ill will against me, who are sharp, will pick up on it and exploit it. And from there, what can I do to finally resolve this thing? That's probably like a really important path to go on anyway. <laughs> It's not your fault your mother didn't love you. Did the author also make the full game of Ganji like he did Greed Island? This is what we were born for. We were born to guard this Ganji game. Uh oh, there's a lot of motion in that blank expression. The 3D element of this is kind of wild. It's like chess cubed. A lot of focus on rhythm. Whoops. Oh, that's what he wanted. <laughs> Alright, take a gunji chip and I place it. Oh, 
こちらの対応次第でいくらでも長引く一曲さあ聞かせてみよう What does it mean? そっちの愛義 Obviously, this is setting up for his disappointment. But what does it mean? <laughs> I don't know what it means, but I don't need to. Infinite possibilities of you losing. I felt bad for you. Oh, you thought you invented it. Oh, what? Oh, that's a high honor, but also terrible. <laughs> She's so far ahead of you. That was your best. After all these games, you came up with something that she was already over a decade ago. I sympathize as someone who feels like I come up with a lot of things that I immediately find out to already exist. Part of that is just inevitable, right? Because there's probably just the truth of what things are and what is. We don't really create what is as much as we discover what is, or what we create is like a synthesis of what is. That creation of new things through synthesis will follow that flow of what is and what's true. So there's a structure to it, and if you're following it correctly, you'll probably end up in a similar place that other people have ended up in. So it's crushing for the king. Can't believe I'm saying this about this Gunji game, but it's also a sign of his genius that he's on the right track. Wait, how old is she? I thought she was 10. And she defeated it, beating herself. Really interesting. There's a lot of emotion in that blank expression. She really lives this life. This is really her. It's her heart. Wow. No wonder she's good at it. She like loved it as if it were real, as if it were a person. Is it not a... I don't know, they didn't really expand on this yet. Shaibuf had this total non-sequitur out of nowhere about how he loves the beauty of ideas. Is that not a similar thing? Oh, someone had a temper tantrum. It seems like she gets rested from Gunji. What do you. What's on your mind, Poofy? No, this is deeply significant. It's gripping him. Oh, he did bring a book! What did he prepare? <laughs> he wouldn't do this direct confrontation thing if he didn't already know he had won. Yeah. Right. That's what it is. He was weaving a smoke rope. Can't run from this. That's just gonna break your own ankles. You want a grip to get a good grip on that thing. Get a stronger grip. Yes, punch it. Punch it! Ah, uh, it's clear conditions. <laughs> Damn, the narrator. Savage critique. The narrator making a rare mid-episode appearance just to rag on Cheetah. He called you a work in progress. He created a new ability. Okay. Oh, he's just... Oh, he's getting from every angle. Your mother didn't love you. <laughs> it's over. Wow, he really let himself get stabbed. Oh, wow. Wow, he was he was so outmatched. He was so beaten. Like the idiot you are. Oh, now you're just... Well, he could run. He could still run. Is this Mercy? On Chidu? He's too stupid to kill. Still curious, though. 
オスラクチョ護衛軍のシャウってやつが他人の能力開花を助ける力があるってことだ。そう、シャウプーフ giving the, the powers。Why does it feel that after that interaction they're closer? They don't really feel like enemies。チーロ is too stupid to be an enemy。Yes! We got him! Hell yeah! 強いのかそれがわかれば苦労しない。時間を稼ぎたい俺たちにとったら願ったりだな。おそらく俺が。あいつを仕留めたからだ。Great work. Yeah, that was a massive blow. 肝心な時に使えねえ野郎だ。Just like my parents. <laughs> バーカ、誰が本当のこと話すかよ。レオルのレンタルポッドは、対象者に恩を売り、その見返りとして、対象者の特殊能力を。Oh, still? 相手の特殊能力を実際に見るか、能力名を知る。So he also can steal abilities in a sense. ただじゃないぜ、などと確認し。それに対して相手が同意した場合に限り、Something very mafia about this. 自動的にレオルの発行にデータが記憶され、similar, similar to その能力を使えない。とにかくまだフラットは死んでねえ。Right. なんとかレオルが来るそうだ。フラットが黒メガネの位置を確認したら、作戦スタートだ。Okay, that's a great power for a mediocre ant. 一人で大丈夫かよ。任せとけよ。やばい役目は回さねえさ。<笑> This guy looks less like a wolf and more like a, a My Little Pony. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. Who's rhythm is really getting disrupted? I, I just want like straight episodes of the king and the, the gungi. I want more of it. Ah, yes, the most interesting part of the human ant apocalyptic war. A board game. Shogi is life, and life is Shogi. I don't have a super clear instinct about what's happening, so I can only speculate at this point. But thinking about it very generally in terms of my own experience. Well, firstly, very few things are random. Or exist in a vacuum, even if that appears to be the case. Fun, or better than fun, what he's experiencing, this sort of raw, pure, gripping engagement, possession, the feeling of right place, right time, this is the thing that matters the most right now and is the best possible thing I could be doing, is too universal, too clear of a, of a thing that exists in humans to be accidental or purposeless. Maybe it's something like a reward mechanism. It's your subconscious telling you, follow this as far as you can. This is the most important thing you could do right now. There's something here that you need and on some level are optimally ready for. It's a very bizarre sort of built in instinct for, for destiny, if you can call it that. They're almost always followed by a significant level up in what is probably an, an area of major need, which will fluctuate throughout one's life based on where one is and what one is already built. Which is why those states don't typically last too long because you pursue it enough to experience that level up to the point of diminishing returns, at which point there are other lower hanging fruits or new paths that emerge through your, your new abilities. One personal example I can give of this for myself is when I first got to Korea a long time ago, my first time living abroad, and I got completely absorbed in a social world in ways I'd never had before. That's one of those lines in my history that's like, there was before that period and after that period in terms of how I think about myself. I guess it was more than that. It wasn't just socializing. It was also going out into the world as an adult, being adventurous, taking risks, leaving behind a lot of vestiges from my childhood, a lot of fears, insecurities, preconceptions, finding out that I, I could plunge myself into things that initially seemed difficult or dangerous and ending up on the other side thriving. I also have a gut sense that speaking of insights often being a discovery or synthesis of the universal. I think it's leaving behind some of the like animal humanness, though that might be the wrong way to frame it. Things of our human nature that we became wired for based on our environment to help us survive that are suboptimal. In the embracing of something beyond just immediate instinct and need, whatever it is, fear, jealousy, self-loathing, overly categorical or non-nuanced thinking for the sake of simplicity of decisions, etc. In favor of things that are perhaps a little bit more detached from our ourselves, just us as the center of the universe, and more in that realm of like actual purity of concept and thought and ideas and patterns of the structure of existence, let's say, where things become so clear for a second that it's hard to ever go backwards or unsee them. This might even map closely with this sort of spectrum from default operation to like maximum maximal awareness and personal agency. How does this relate to the king? Not exactly sure, but I mean, he's born as this rampaging, biologically driven ant tyrant meant for breeding and destruction, much like the basest of instincts that all humans have, but also gifted with this 
his mind, the ability to grapple with much higher concepts and to recognize them so that when confronted with Gungi, a game that has very clear logical parameters that, you know, being complex enough has some mirror for, for life itself, he cannot win, he cannot overpower it with those natural biologically driven gifts he was born with. That kind of thing might have a way of like pulling one up, if that makes sense. And it will command his attention because it, it's like higher than where he's operating. And being both a genius and human to a certain extent, he has this internal radar for the scale of that, for the ranking of things that he cannot see that is forcing him to pay attention. It would feel good. I mean, this is controversial, but I I think if you're always understanding it and if you're really getting only the truth, the truth always feels good. The truth can't feel bad if it's only pure truth. I think the truth can be painful when it's competing with things we're attached to that are untrue, that were originally there, again, on that sort of animal self-preservation and protection level. Unlike most of the things the king has encountered so far, Gungi is a problem he can't punch away, though Cheetah would probably try. That also might explain why this girl, Gungi Master, doesn't seem to have a shakable rhythm. It's because it's not her. It's just Gungi. This is also probably a stretch, but one thing I think we've seen a bunch in this arc is sort of a question of uh, birthright or the advantages or disadvantages you have from birth and how that might dictate your future, like the royal guards and other ants. But this other side of things, this sort of understanding, it might might not be talent based at all, it might be accessible to everyone. Maybe the only skill that really matters is the ability to follow the, the breadcrumb of truth and being able to let go of the things that are not useful, that are not fully accurate, that are not fully in line with what is possible. The faster and clearer you get to that starting point, that spark, the better chances you have of achieving that sort of greatness. Maybe why this Goongi girl master player is seen to be exceedingly humble. It is just about whatever this higher thing is, wearing the mask of Goongi.